In a country where citizens often fill the gaps left by government, charities and NGOs play a vital role. It's why we're so proud of our very own Carte Blanche Making a Difference Trust as it continues saving children's lives. Along with dedicated and generous donors, partners and volunteers, the Trust builds vital life-saving and life-changing medical facilities at state-run hospitals. And there's no better place to demonstrate the fruits of that collaboration than the latest project unfolding at the Seboking Hospital in Gauteng. Welcome to what used to be my office. Your desk is still there, but we're busy saving a baby's life. It's a space more suited to paperwork than complex medical treatment, an office converted to a makeshift ER. But it's challenges like these that the carte blanche Making a Difference Trust turns into opportunities to transform children's lives. Your child is injured. You rush her to emergency along with every adult who's been in a bar fight, a shootout or a car crash. In most South African hospitals, there's little distinction between child and adult emergencies, which means everyone's treated on the same first come, first served basis. We don't have an ICU. We should get a child, stabilize the child, and then uh, look for space in a, in a tertiary center where they have ICU. Dr. Tapelo Telatsane is head of pediatrics at Sebokeng Regional Hospital, which serves the 1.3 million people of Sedibeng district. Because the ICU um, are almost always full, we are forced to be stuck with a child where we have to do everything. In the last decade, the Carte Blanche Making a Difference Trust has built two pediatric high care wards at Sebo King, but they're operating beyond capacity. This facility is affording us the ability to be able to continue with intensive care. But like only just, right? You yeah. need more. Yeah, we need more. Uh, beautiful as it is, it's not good enough to meet the needs uh, of the children uh, of City Bank. Children need special expertise and treatment. Medics trained in adult emergencies might not recognize a child in severe distress. The equipment is not designed for tiny bodies, and babies can be exposed to additional risks in casualty, like infection. That's when we came up with the concept of having our own pediatric consultation room. Sister Andronica Namane is operational manager of the pediatric lower high care facility. That's when Dr. Telezanis' room came into place, whereby it's our temporary pediatric casualty at the moment. Here, children are treated with other children by specialist doctors and nurses. And within 30 minutes of a child arriving here, would have been seen by a trained nurse in pediatrics and a trained doctor in pediatrics. But ingenuity and passion alone can't transform this cramped space into a suitable treatment area. We don't have a waiting area, so we're basically using the passage as a waiting area. Number two, the consultation room is supposed to have oxygen, medical points, enough space between the doctor and the patient and the parent. If we have an emergency, suddenly we have to evacuate everybody. Sometimes we don't have anywhere to take them. It's just a big challenge for us. This one-month-old baby is receiving critical medical care in a head of department's office. But with the help of the carte blanche making a difference trust, all of this will change for babies just like little Palesa in time to come. Since 2008, the Trust has built over 22 dedicated pediatric facilities in state hospitals around South Africa. Its most recent triumph is a pediatric outpatient burns unit at Nguelezana Hospital in KwaZulu-Natal. Completed last year with a principal capital donation from South 32's Hillside Aluminium and the ongoing support of our professional partners and material donors. Here, children with burns injuries now receive the long-term treatment they need at a specialist facility. At Sebo King, an even more ambitious project is quickly taking shape with the support of the same partners. If you think this is any old building site, think again. This is the makings of a highly specialized center. We're talking a children's casualty unit. On the design, we incorporate 
uh, those skylights into the pattern. Architect Bram van der Hoeven is the project's lead designer and has worked with the trust for over a decade. It is pro bono work. It's time and money and your skill. What drives you? Well, children is important. It's the future and it's needed. So it's a way of giving back. This site, nestled tightly between the hospital's existing buildings, will soon be transformed into a child-friendly space filled with natural light. It's important to lay out the perfect solution because the unit like this is always under a compromise. Uh, in this instance, it's space. So you lay out the technical requirements and from there, you need to prioritize what is important. Have a look at that. The deceptively simple layout has been meticulously planned down to the very last centimeter. It's important to understand the flow of the unit. As the parent come in with the sick child, there is a nurse station there. If the, there's a child who is in trouble, you see them as they come in. Health facilities planner Constance Bajomo developed the project's clinical brief, which details how every space in the building will be used. This is more like your ICU, so if this child needs life support, they will be able to manage the child there. The next one is your counselling room. This is our treatment area. It's open because it needs to be visual to the next station, which will be in the middle here. The new unit is designed to meet all the needs of a family in a medical emergency, from the resuscitation bays tucked out of sight for privacy to the play area for siblings. This is a very interesting project for, for me and the team because we've never developed a specific pediatric emergency unit. But building a new unit and integrating it with the existing hospital is not an easy process. With a build like this, you have to dig deep not only figuratively, but in this case, literally. Before building could begin, a thousand cubic meters of soil had to be excavated and replaced. We couldn't do just the normal strip foundations due to the soil not being able to um, carry all the, the loads from the building. So we needed to design a raft foundation. Johan Duplessis is the project's structural technician. So for us who aren't builders, what is a raft foundation? So a raft foundation is what it says, it's floating on top of the soil. It spreads the loads quite a lot more. So with the raft, the entire building will move on top of it. From now on, the most technical difficult part will be tying into the existing services and also linking into the walkways and the adjoining buildings. But the way forward is clear and bright. The hospital has already received a budget to co-staff the new unit, which will be completed by July. What will be, do you think, the, the most powerful moment for you? I think to see the first patients being served, that's the proudest moment. As for Dr. Teletsane and his staff, the new centre simply can't come quickly enough. We're not only just dealing with children. We, this child comes from a family, and this family is coming from a community. And I think in the, in the longer term, uh, the overall uh, health status of children in this district will be improved. An environment that will say, I'm child friendly, I'm family friendly, we care for you. That place will be perfecto for us. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.